What's up, JGL family? I'm what yo, thank you for tuning in once again to my channel. If you have new, I want you to like, subscribe, turn on that notification bell. Now, thank you for everyone who has watched the video of part one. Um, that was called part what was there was less part one, who was talking about adultery. Um, throughout Facebook, Instagram, um, I received inboxes and people just saying, thank you for putting out the content. But yo, we gotta continue to go forward. We gotta continue to go on to the next chapter <clears throat> because the next chapter is um, actually about porn and there'll be different parts in that. But we're on part two of chapter one. So I hope no one's getting confusing. Stay, uh, stay up to date with the thumbnails, stay up to date with the title. That way you won't get confused. So chapter one, lust, part two. This one is about the deception of the heart. All right. And then of course, I'm going to start off with a word from the Lord and then we're going to go on from there. Now, if you go turn to the book of James chapter four, verse eight through nine, it says, draw nigh to God and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double minded. Verse nine, be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. When we are caught up in the mindset of adultery, lust, promiscuousness, that's a word. It's fun. The sin is fun. The sin is exciting. The ducking and dodging, the weaving and, and, and the playing of the, the games, it seems fun. But, Christ, but the Bible says, let your mourning and weeping and your laughter, it says, let, it says be afflicted. And mourn and weep and let that laughter and that excitement that you having be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Let that stuff that you're excited about doing, the lust that you're excited about doing, the secret sins that you're excited about doing, let afflict your soul before the Lord and let that become mourning. Let that not be joy. You see what I'm saying? That's what that means. That's what that means. Turn that which you enjoy doing in the dark. And turn that around to and afflict your soul. That's what it means. As you begin to compromise your relationship with your spouse. Now we talked about last time, we talked about um how the mind, the mindset is not guarded. You're not guarding our mind, so we drift off into doing um different things. Okay. We we drift off and we become numb to our morals and our principles. Okay. So Here's, I'm going to read some from my notes, okay? As you begin to compromise your relationship with your spouse, the deceptive behavior increased by and by. The unguarded mind tells itself that everything you're doing is under control, but that's a lie. You'll start finding yourself working around that other person's schedule. You say, but I got my marriage under control. You say you start finding ways to text when your spouse is asleep. When your spouse is away in their home and they're not around, you find, your, you find ways to engage in conversations. But you say you've got everything under control. And that is a lie. Everything is not under control. In the book of Proverbs, chapter 27, book of Proverbs 27 and 12, it says this. A prudent man foresees evil. And hide of himself, but the simple paths on and are punished. Prudent means to see what you're doing, see in the future. If I continue down this path, what's the outcome? When we are caught up in lust, fornication, adultery, we're on adultery now. We, when we're caught up in this sinful nature, we're not foreseeing the future. We're only seeing what we want right now at that moment. We're not seeing who we're going to hurt. We're not going to see us hurting our families. We're not going to see what type of financial um, setbacks may occur because of this. None of that is at play. Only thing that matters at that moment is what you want, what you need, and what you think is best for you. 
Because a simple take no thought to the consequences of their actions. Nobody thinks about that. We just do what we want to do, right? See, the unguarded mind does this slowly. The simple drips of, of, uh, of flirting. We talk about flirting. The longing for attention from someone else. They start off real simple. Real simple, that you think. Little drips of water just dropping, flirting, right? But the flirting turns to other things with the unguarded mind. We, we, we deceive ourselves to thinking that we got everything under control. The flirting turns to other things. You start begin to be emotionally involved. You start to begin to be touchy-feely. You start to really get in your, your intimate thoughts and progress into the idea of another person. Think about it. Telling the other person how you feel in comparison to your wife or your husband. You start telling the other person, what if I was able to be together? What if it was me and you instead of? You start throwing out little conversations like that. And then we start downgrading the individuals that we with. And all of this is a deception. All of this is a deception. What it, we, we, the, the deception is, see, it's like this. The more and more and more we get caught up into a lie of believing that we have everything under control, the by and by and by and by <clears throat> our moral principles and what we think and what we know to do is right gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. And that's what we think as, as we think in our minds and it gets dimmer and dimmer and dimmer. We'll start finding ourselves arguing with our spouse to get out. Nick picking them about little things just to have our way. We start doing, uh, uh, playing little mental games. And then we go and tell the other person that we're involved with that, yo, he or she doesn't do what she used to do. He or she isn't doing what they're supposed to do. I'm so alone. We start playing the victim role. I am a victim. Just to win over the emotion or the affection of the other person that you are caught up in your affair with. I've heard so many stories throughout my time with people talking about situations that they came across just like this. And it always ends in something destructive. Like I said before, many people have gone to the grave. Many people have lost their lives because of adultery. Men are in prison right now because of adultery. Men and women both are in the grave because of adultery. Because the spouse found them and couldn't handle it. Are we willing to play those type of games with sin? The Bible says that the wages of sin is death. So when we're playing around with the game of sin, the reward for sin is death. Either we're going to lose our life or we're going to lose the trust and the value and principles that we have as a person. And regardless, playing around with sin is always a chance that you lose it not on your eternal life, period. Book of Ephesians, chapter 4, verse 29. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying that it may minister grace unto the hearers. It is time to repent. It is time to repent. It is time to look away. Now you say, well, what am, I, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to do? I've gone too far. I've gone too far. I have a relationship over here with this person. And I have a marriage over here. A home over here. A family over here. What am I supposed to do? This is what you need to do. You need to go to the Lord, first of all, ask God for forgiveness. Now, if your spouse doesn't know, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you to keep a secret and not tell them. I'm not going to tell you to tell them. I'm going to tell you to go to God first. Depending on your situation, you go to God first and you tell the Lord, you say, hey, my Lord, I have been caught up in an affair. I have broken the commandments of God and I have done this, that, and the third, and I'm sorry. What should I do? One, you cut off your relationship with the other person. And two, I would suggest that you let the other person, your spouse, know what you've been, what's been going on. And the reason why I say that is this. If you cut off your situation with the other person, right, and you're done with them, and you go and tell your spouse what's been going on. You sit down and you talk to them and you trust God will soften their heart and that they will be forgiven and understanding. If your spouse 
says, baby, I forgive you. Let's move forward. Then when the other person, if they're immature and emotionally attached to you, when they come back and, and your spouse finds out, you're rather for them to find out from you than from find out from them. You get what I'm saying? So that's why I say it's best that you let the other person know, hey, I've been going, I've been doing this. Listen, if the spouse doesn't forgive you and they walk away from the marriage, my friend, we have to choose a lesser two evils. And that's why it's so delicate and hard sometimes to actually give counsel on these situations. But I would say to duck and dodge anything, if you're already caught up, confess your sins. But my friend, if you have the opportunity right now to get your life right, to turn this thing around, this is the opportunity to let go of that lustful nature, that deceptive passion, because the heart deceives the mind. Brothers and sisters, I hope and I pray that we find refuge in Christ and we turn away from our lustful passions. Fast, pray, spend time with God, Love your wife, love your husband. Peace, love, God bless.